I keep six honest serving lady boys. They taught me all I knew. Their names are why and what and when and how and where and who. The title and opening to this video some of you will recognise is a nod to Rudyard Kipling's Six Honest Men poem. For those of you who don't know, my profession, I'm a computer scientist. Kipling's poem is useful in some of the work I do and will prove useful in this video. Kipling's poem was the first thing that came to mind after I read the Stickman submission by Sydney titled Been With A Lady Boy. My video here is a response piece of sorts. I decided not to go through each of Sydney's arguments from his piece, explicitly refuting central points or finding mistakes and explaining why, but rather I will present six stories from my experiences with the lady boys at Patea to present my case that there is more to this puzzle than meets the eye and more to think about and analyse when it comes to us men who are attracted to and or who have sex with transsexuals people born male that take female hormones and now present as physically as female. So here we go. I've been with many ladyboys since 2012, but I've kept just six. Each of them I've been attracted to and have kept around long term for various reasons. Reasons I will discuss openly in this video. I've not, during this time, been with a man who is masculine or who looks or acts like a man. Let me begin with Ladyboy Y. Her name is Wawa. Why did I decide to have sex with Ladyboy Wawa? Why was I attracted to her? Why have I kept going back to her since 2014? Let me tell you a little bit about Ladyboy Wawa. We met for the first time in 2014 at Pook Bar in Soy Bacow. Wawa was 20 years old and I was 35. At the time, Wawa did not have breasts and only had just started taking female hormones. My attraction to her was not overwhelming at first sight, and this was due to her flat chest and somewhat masculine face that had not yet been changed by the powerful effects of female hormones. I'm six foot two, and Wawa is six foot two as well in heels. If I was a homosexual, I suspect I might have found Wawa more attractive when we first met, given her more masculine appearance. Whilst my initial reaction was not overly enthusiastic due to Wawa's look, upon talking to Wawa I recognised within the space of a few short minutes that I was talking with a person who had a beautiful heart and this is why I decided to have sex with her. I remember thinking to myself, this is a really kind and caring person with a beautiful, kind, gentle soul. A type of person I had just never met before ever in my life back in the Western world. I was very attracted to Wawa's heart and soul. I went upstairs with her to the short time room and we had sex. The first time was okay, but it wasn't great as it felt like I had just had sex with a man and that was due to Wawa's lack of breasts, very short time on for female hormones. Wawa and I kept in touch over the last four years and I see that she's taken a lot of female hormones had breast surgery and now looks like an incredibly beautiful but very tall woman at age 24. So beautiful in fact that I can't believe it's actually the same person. I sent her a photo recently that was taken of us together back in 2015 at Pook Bar in Soy 6 and even she cannot believe how she's changed since that time due to the powerful effects of the female hormones. Now, Wawa is outwardly beautiful as well, as having the same beautiful heart and soul. Whilst many genetic women are outwardly beautiful, I've never met one ever in my life that has had the inner beauty of Wawa. A deeply respectful person as well. She posted a video of her on her old Facebook page a while back at her birthday when her friends made her a cake, and she was very appreciative and gave a deep Thai why. As an atheist and a scientist, I know evolution via natural selection is why we're all here, and so I'm deeply sceptical of religion in general, but I must say that Buddhism in particular, whilst being yet another ism, is a religion that can bring out some very special things in its devotees. As I write this submission, create this video, 
I'm on my second day in Pattaya. In fact, last night I met up with Wawa at the Pattaya Beer Garden. We had a great chat and caught up after nine months of me not being here in Thailand. She's as beautiful as ever, with the same kind heart that drew me to her originally four years ago. I remarked to her a while ago that we had never had an argument. That's rare for someone like me, as I seem to have a way of irritating people with my ideas and just generally because of the way that I am. Wawa truly has a calming influence on me and we work exceptionally well together. That's why I've kept coming back to her over the years. It's rare to find such a, a caring, gentle soul. I certainly have not found one in the form of a genetic female and over the years I've been with and have known many of them. The very thought of comparing in my mind my ex-girlfriends versus Wawa there is simply no comparison. Wawa comes out the winner by a very large margin. In my conversation with her last night, I remarked to her that we value each other for our personhood, and she understood immediately and intuitively what I had just said. Truly valuing someone for their personhood, for who they are and not for what they are, I have found is something only men are capable of doing. At no point have I ever heard Wawa nag about anything or utter such phrases as what have you done for me lately? A phrase we so commonly hear uttered from the lips of the Western female who, let us admit, by her very nature, remains the core reason that we all came to Thailand in the first place. Consider Newton's third law. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. The statement means that in every interaction, there is a pair of forces acting on the two interacting objects. The size of the forces on the first object equals the size of the force on the second object. Genetic Western female actions. Bitch, nag, complain, demean, belittle, demand, extract, suck the life out of. Male reaction. Take flight. Destination, Pattaya, Thailand. Whilst on flight. Open mind and consider alternative option whilst there, e.g. the third gender, the ladyboys of Thailand. Let's move on to ladyboy Wat. Her name is Som. What makes Som so interesting? What's the nature of our friendship? Ladyboy Wat is very interesting to me. We met for the first time in 2012 at So Wat Bar in Soy 6. Son was 28 at the time and I was 33, a closer match in terms of age. Son was the ladyboy that convinced me through her gestures, speech, movement and responses that the brain of a transsexual is different to the brain of a male or female. Brain scans have indicated this as well and there have been scientific studies done on this subject that back this up, which you can Google. I knew intuitively the instant I spoke with Son for the first time I was not talking with a person that possessed a stereotypically male brain or a stereotypically female brain. Hers was different, somewhere in between. The human brain is a research subject of interest to me in my computing work, as the holy grail for us computer scientists is to be able to create a Blade Runner type replicant, a genetic machine more human than human, or a silicon based robot with a neural net CPU with many of the capabilities of a human. Think love dolls capable of being the perfect sexual partner. The human brain is remarkable for the processing it's capable of, while she's using very little power, the equivalent of a 20 watt light bulb. There are fields of computing of great importance to humanity that are intensely interested in designing computer systems to use much less power. Part of my interest in the ladyboys of Pattaya is I see them as people that science could learn a lot from due to their different brains, and science needs to learn much more about the human brain and how it's capable of such extraordinary processing if we are ever to design the perfect love doll or a Terminator type android, but I digress. Som was a highly experienced bar girl, had breasts, a sharp business mind, and a very respectful attitude, a deeply religious person. I remember thinking to myself after our first sexual experience together, the most of the practicing religious people I know are, in actuality, practicing hypocrites. And here I've found a Thai ladyboy of D 
deep belief and conviction, determined to live her life doing good things for the benefit of others, whilst knowing full well that her job puts her in conflict with what many others would consider an appropriate occupation for a religious person. Som is special to me partly because she was one of the very first ladyboys I went with back in 2012. She wasn't my first, but we had a great connection right from the very beginning. Som could easily run a bar and would make a great mama's aunt now that she's ageing out of being a bar girl. She knows her bar girl days are numbered due to her age and the difficulties she has had recently in finding customers. Of all the ladyboys I know, Som is the only one I would trust to run a bar. If I wanted to open a bar here in Patea, she would be my choice of mama's aunt without a moment's hesitation. She has many fine qualities as a business person. Her and I would make a formidable business partnership. She has great drive to succeed and there has been many a time whilst I've been back in the Western world that I've considered contacting her and giving her a bit of startup capital to start a bar. But we all know the risks and troubles of opening yet another bar in Pattaya and where that would most likely lead me. Next is Ladyboy Wen. Her name is Benz. That's a name I'll remember for the rest of my life, given the experiences we've had together. It was December 2013 in Soy 6 when I first met Ladyboy Benz. It was my second trip to Pattaya, after a year in the Western world, dreaming of getting back here. I was walking down Soy 6 when Benz approached me for the first time. I was completely overwhelmed by her feminine beauty. She was quite literally the most beautiful Ladyboy I had ever seen in my life. I was hesitant, however, as I thought she looked very young. She told me she was 20, so I thought, okay, a 14-year age difference. That's not so bad, looking around here at some of the other couplings. She took me into the full moon bar where she worked, and we had a drink together. I couldn't wait to go upstairs with her. We did, and we had a fantastic sexual experience. Literally, one of the best sexual experiences of my life. Benz, it was obvious, had been taking a lot of female hormones and exuded a femininity to a level that I had not witnessed before in a ladyboy and had never before witnessed in a genetic female. Benz, I believe, never went through a male puberty. She had been taking female hormones before puberty hit, which is why she was able to avoid at least some of the problems encountered by other transsexuals that need cosmetic work done later to resolve e.g. chin, jaw and other feminization surgery. Seasoned ladyboy lovers know the more female hormones a ladyboy takes, the less the equipment downstairs works. So this experience was definitely an overwhelmingly feeling of being with a stunningly beautiful woman. Someone a middle class, medium status, medium earning man like myself certainly had never been with before. What with female hypergamy and all that ruling me out. I was completely overwhelmed by Benz and I ended up falling in lust with her at first and then, to the detriment of my financial health, I fell in love with her. This, of course, shocked me that I could fall in love with Ladyboy given I had only ever fallen in love with genetic women in the past. Over the years, I sent Benz a bit of money here and there and when I was back home in the West something I vowed never to do. It wasn't a lot of money. It amounted to a few thousand dollars over five years, but it set a dangerous precedent that I wasn't comfortable with, and I stopped doing it. Of note, and unsurprisingly to us seasoned potato players, my relationship with Benz has not been the same since I stopped occasionally sending her money. Even though I knew deep down from the very beginning she was probably only really interested in me for my money, I wanted desperately to believe that wasn't the case. On my next trip, I asked Benz to let me see her ID card as we walked into the Mercure Hotel together and I memorised her date of birth. Turns out she was not 20 when we first went together. She had only just turned 18 two months prior. This made me angry, knowingly, first, that she lied to me about her age and secondly that I'd been with a person I considered too young and certainly would not have gone with had I known her real age. I didn't say anything to her about it 
but mentally it was a mark against her and a mark against me as well. How could I have been so stupid and not checked her ID myself personally on day one? What type of person had I become having sex with such a young, impressionable person? She has accrued more marks against her over the years due to her requests for money, her lies, her not looking after something I valued that I gave her to look after for me, as well as various messages she sent to me over the years, which only seemed to occur when she needed money or wanted something she couldn't get without my help. I learned a valuable lesson dealing with Ben's. One I already knew from my days dealing with genetic women, but it's a lesson I needed to learn again dealing with the ladyboys of Patea. That lesson is, looks can be deceiving. Whilst being stunningly beautiful, her heart was not as beautiful. Her character needed development. She was very high maintenance, would spend any money and more given to her, maintaining her appearance with cosmetic surgery and the like and had serious trust issues with foreigners, which, of course, comes with the territory in her profession. The sex with Ben's was unbelievably great. There's another lesson here about the power of female youth and beauty at the age of 18, even if that is in the form of a person that was originally born male. I was not driven to her by her masculinity, of which I detected next to none. On to Ladyboy Howe, another som. A highly manipulative individual whose character I recognised instantly when we first met. Her character could be easily seen whilst peering into her eyes, whilst looking at her face and definitely through her actions. I'd read a book when I was 17 called The 48 Laws of Power and had re-read it a number of times since. The book is a bestseller, selling over 1.2 million copies in the United States and is the most popular book with prison inmates amoral, cunning, ruthless and instructive. The 48 Laws of Power is the definitive manual for anyone interested in gaining, observing or defending against ultimate control. In the book, Robert Greene distilled 3,000 years of the history of power into 48 essential laws by drawing from the philosophies of Machiavelli, Sun Tzu and Karl von Clausewitz and also from the lives of figures ranging from Henry Kissinger, to P.T. Barnum. The moment I met Sam, I knew I was dealing with a calculating, shrewd, seasoned bar girl who had the game of power down pat, even at her relatively young age. My guard immediately went up dealing with her, but at the same time I was fascinated, but not surprised, that someone like her would be working in the Patea environment. How was I drawn to Sam? How many bar girls like some exist in Patea? How does this environment bring out these traits in a person? I was walking back to my condo at City Garden when I met Som, who was working at the party bar directly opposite the back entrance to the Avenue Shopping Centre. From the moment I saw her, I knew. She had a look in her eyes that said she was deceptive and not to be trusted in any way. I found her interesting though, as I knew within a minute of speaking with her that I was dealing with a highly manipulative individual and I wanted to find out more about her and what makes her tick. I figured there must be many bar girls like her in Patea, but had not yet come across any with her degree of skill. Skill developed naturally in this environment. I also figured, well before I came here for the first time back in 2012, that Patea would have to have many bar girls like so. But to my surprise, I've only come across her as a prime example of one. We've seen each other a few times here and there over the years since 2015, but I have kept her firmly at arm's length as I knew her lies and manipulations were just too good. I told her flat out on the first night, this is who I am, this is what I can offer, we come together, have a great time, I pay you a reasonable price for your services, and we're both happy. Well, I had to repeat that little speech a number of times over the years, as she tried on her manipulative bullshit with me, so I've avoided her for the most part. Does she belong as one of my six serving honest ladyboys? Maybe not. But she's honest about one thing, her want for money, so I'll leave her in here. I thought to myself, this bar girl will find herself a Westerner and milk him for all he's worth. 
Photographs I've seen over the years posted by her to her social media profile has only proven my initial instinct about her to be absolutely spot on. She displays a lot of solid gold jewellery given to her by her Western sponsor. I will not judge this man. I suspect that just like myself, he's come to the same conclusion that he's better off spending a little on his bar girl to save a lot by staying single in his own country and avoiding the catastrophe of divorce down the track. Good luck to him. I wish him well. The Patea environment, a place where money is exchanged in return for sexual services, can bring out the darker side of human emotions and behaviour, both from us Westerners and from the Thai bar girls. I mean, think about it. The younger, sexier, more attractive and nicer the bar girls are to us Westerners, the more money they can make, but they're competing in a competitive environment which can be cutthroat, especially during low season when they're not earning very much. According to Christian tradition, the seven deadly sins are envy, gluttony, greed, lust, pride, sloth and wrath. I see a lot of those seven deadly sins around the traps here in Patea, particularly greed, lust and sloth. Ladyboy where is Yaya? Where did we meet and where did this go? Yaya and I first met outside the whiskey bar in Soy 6 back in December 2013. Six foot two, tall in heels and wearing a large straw hat. Yaya and I started off okay, but things went downhill over time. We kept in contact over the years and we've had video calls a number of times whilst I was back home in Australia. Communication was a bit of a problem though, even given I speak some Thai and I'm fluent in English. We had troubles understanding one another. Yaya has some serious issues to deal with. I don't think she actively works in the nightlife anymore and has moved on to an office job. I think what happened with her was she fell for me to some degree and whilst I was nice to her and treated her well, she wanted more than I was able to give emotionally. Maybe I brought up feelings in her that she'd not felt before, or maybe it was something else, but each call I had with her, I felt she was trying to emotionally manipulate me, and I left each call feeling bad. Life is too short to deal with that kind of thing, so I let things just naturally fade away over time. I don't like it when someone intentionally triggers negative emotions in me for their self-interested reasons. I walk away from people like that, no matter who they are, or what they represent. I've walked away from high-level CEOs and bankers due to this. I really hate it when someone intentionally sets out to manipulate me with the goal of making me feel bad for their own self-interest. Lastly, allow me to introduce Ladyboy Who, the last of my six honest-serving ladyboys. Amy is an American transsexual working here in Patea. She stands out with her white skin, perfect English and American accent. She has the potential to be a great leader in the trans community. No doubt about that. I met her for the first time in 2016 at Fantasy Lounge in Soy Bacow. What drew me to her was her look and perfect English. I thought to myself, wow, now here's a transsexual I could get to know, have a great conversation with and learn a lot from. So I did. We've had some great chats over the years and I have discussed various Patea business ideas with her that would have me working on advocacy and film work with the Lady Boys of Patea. I learned from Amy that it is indeed possible for a Westerner to immerse themselves in the Patea environment, learn the Thai language fluently, gain the trust of the Lady Boys and work alongside them. I learned that some of my film ideas have great potential here to help a lot of men from all over the world I was helping the lady boys as well. I learnt that growing up in a small rural town in America as a transsexual is difficult and it was through this difficulty and adversity that led to her coming here to Patea, a spiritual home where being a transsexual is easier, where being around one's own kind brings kinship and a place for belonging and acceptance which is what all the lady boys want and need. It's up there, very high on their list, along with money, which is number one here in Thailand, of course. 
So completes the story of my six honest serving lady boys. I will end the story by letting you all know that I keep but one honest serving man, a childhood friend who has been with me from the very beginning. We grew up together, we went to school together, we came of age together, we shared many great times in the bars and clubs of Melbourne with the ladies, and many bad times as well. I brought my one honest serving male friend to Patea back in December 2015, and his experiences here in Thailand are instructive. My friend is an Australian Albanian. He has traditionalist parents and was brought up as a Muslim. Whilst he appears, sounds and engages in activities that many Aussies do, he has rather conservative views. He hates gays. He hated ladyboys. Claims both need to be beaten. I introduced him to Wawa in Soy 6 and he had a look of shock on his face. He didn't know what to say or how to act or what to do. His upbringing and heterosexuality runs deep, very deep. He obviously felt a great deal of conflict between his attraction to females and what he saw when he looked at and met some of the ladyboys at Patea. We kept walking down Soy 6. I told him there are many females here and that ladyboys are in the minority and I'm not one to judge him, so do whatever he likes. He's a free single man after all. He pointed to a woman he found to be very attractive. He said to me, can you go up and ask her if she's a real woman, just so I'm sure. I looked at her and I knew she was a ladyboy, but we went up to her anyway and I spoke to her in Thai. I asked her if she was a woman or a ladyboy. She said she's a ladyboy. I told my friend. He was shocked and internally very conflicted again. We kept walking. The next day, he made me take him to the Thai Airways office to change his flight to the first flight back to Melbourne. The next morning, he was gone. He even left the door of the condo wide open whilst I slept. Would I be friends with him if I met him today and did not grow up with him? Most certainly not. But he's a mate. So what can you do? There's a probable reason, Sydney, why your Thai massage girl was surprised that you didn't go with the ladyboy. Why she was quite puzzled that you couldn't conceivably go with a Katui. It's because women know intuitively and by experience that men, heterosexual men, are drawn to female youth and beauty like moths to a flame. Thai women know the ladyboys present an image of female beauty that is impossible for a genetic female to ever attain and can be absolutely irresistible to a man. As Mark Renton remarked to Francis Begbie in the movie Trainspotting when he got caught out by a transsexual at a nightclub, let's face it, it could have been wonderful. Wonderful, the experience truly is. Many a heterosexual man has gone with a ladyboy here in Thailand, and many more will in the future, forevermore. Few to none of these men, myself included, would seek out relations with masculine men who look and act like men. Homosexual men are drawn to masculinity, not femininity. The male instinct towards female youth, fertility and beauty is so strong that a person born a man who takes female hormones and presents as more beautiful than a genetic female is more alluring to many a heterosexual male than a genetic female. more alluring physically and more alluring emotionally as well because the man instantly recognises they're dealing with a person that is up for sex on the same level that they are, can understand them and appreciate them more than a genetic female ever could, a person they can be authentic with and share a peaceful time with. That's the case with me and it's the case with other men I know who are into ladyboys. We see them and value them for the look of a female and this overpowers our other instincts that tell us it's a man. I've made friends with older ladyboys to prove to myself that this is the case. Ladyboys in their late 40s and early 50s who I'm not attracted to because their female appearance is gone. Their very female appearing youth and beauty, the signs of fertility that us men are so drawn to are well gone. It's an incredible experience being with a young, beautiful ladyboy, but I know that if I stayed with one long term, 
my attraction to that person would wane. Maybe not so much with Wawa though, as our bond is so strong. I would hope that I could overcome this. What happens, Sydney, is the first time we go with a ladyboy, we men must make a fateful decision. When we meet a ladyboy that we're attracted to, due to her feminine appearance, do we take a chance and go with her, or do we not? It's a very difficult choice for the rational male, and one that must be made very carefully for a whole host of reasons, the most important of which are the majority of genetic Western women will not want a man that has been with a ladyboy before. I'll repeat that. The majority of genetic Western women will not want a man that has been with a ladyboy before. I've proven this to myself on my own Tinder profile back in Australia, where I was very open about being with ladyboys in Thailand. I was met with a lot of rejection. There is a reason women as a group don't like men who have sex with men or men who have sex with transsexuals. And it all boils back down to her selfish, self-interested reasons. As women view us men as utilities, they know full well that a man that cannot be controlled sexually is a man that cannot be kept in service to her or be relied upon for long-term provision and support, neither financially nor emotionally. This is a highly risky situation for the female to be with such a man, as he could, at any time, go off and live a carefree life of much less responsibility, much less stress, and much less work, with much less nagging, complaining and requests, and at much less cost financially by being with a ladyboy. Ladyboys, of course, being cheaper than women over the long term due to their non-reproductive capability. Obviously, a man with dangerous alternative options is unacceptable to the vast majority of women, who one must judge by their actions. Actions which indicate 100% that it is high status, high earning, wealthy men that they are most attracted to. The ladyboys can develop this attraction to high status men as well, I might add, due to being treated so well when they're young and beautiful by these male suitors. But I do not believe that ladyboys have the same hypergamous instinct built in that females do. This is a learned thing with the ladyboys, and they're not anywhere near as adept at utilising it as a weapon in the same way that genetic females can and do when dealing with men. I'll leave you with my slightly modified version of Kipling's poem that I think highlights the situation that us men that seek the company of ladyboys and in and the situation that the genetic uh, women are in that we have assess successfully avoided dealing with on this road less travelled path. I keep six honest serving ladyboys. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. I send them over land and sea. I send them east and west. But after they have worked for me, I give them all the rest. I let them rest from nine to five, for I am busy then as well as breakfast, lunch and tea, for they are hungry ladyboys. But different folk have different views. I know a person small. She keeps 10 million serving men who get no rest at all. She sends them abroad on her own affairs from the second she opens her eyes. One million hows, two million wares, and seven million whys. All the best, gentlemen. I'm the pretender. P.S. If I can draw all of your attention to this fascinating lecture by male to female transsexual Nina Arsenault, which is very instructive and a must view for those of us trying to understand the male attraction to transsexuals. The lecture is titled The, Erot the Erotization of Male to Female Transsexuals by Heterosexual Men. I'll leave the link in the description to this video. All the best, gentlemen. I'm the pretender.